Anyway, if you if you somehow live in a vacuum and you have not heard the story here, we learned that the Dodgers have a brouhaha on their hands as they fired Shohei Otani's longtime right hand man, his interpreter, his liaison to the American media has been fired. Now, why? What did he do? What? What did, did he go to? Like the wrong bar in South Korea? No. You see, that comes after the interpreter was accused by Otani's own attorneys, his own legal team, of engaging in what they called a massive theft of Otani's funds to place bets with an illegal bookmaker. Now that is a spicy meatball right there. That I mean, you got a pro ball player whose right hand guy, right, his conduit is putting bets. Now the feds are involved in this. This came to light a federal investigation. They tracked down the bookmaker. There are millions of dollars involved, and you know these are my favorite stories. So let us discuss the question: Is this Shohei Otani story? with the gambling interpreter, a big deal, a little deal, or no deal. So I've got my thoughts on this. I've got the iceberg, eight ball, and Jordan rules. And we will combine all of these things together, and we are going to make lots and lots of billable hours because, uh um, baby, if you're an attorney, your eyeballs get the size of saucers. You're like, oh, cha-ching. Cha-ching, cha-ching. All right, so, uh, A, to answer the question, is this a big deal, little deal, or no deal for Otani? This story is not a big deal. It is not a little deal. It is not no deal. It is Sasquatch. It is a neutron bomb. Uh, Now, we're still trying to decode what actually happened. And you've got those that are running interference for Otani who are claiming nothing happened. He's just an idiot and didn't realize what was going on. He's an innocent victim. It's been a whirlwind, right? The interpreter, who you don't know his name, right? But he was in the Dodgers dugout in the season opener. Hello? He was there in the dugout in the season opener. After the game, we are told this cat addressed the team in the locker room there, about a story he said that was going to be coming out that is, quote, all his fault. He mentioned his gambling addiction. Okay. So the game ends, I mean, 9 in the morning Eastern time, and this guy's out by late afternoon. By late afternoon. So if you believe Otani and the people running interference for Otani, Again, he's completely obtuse, had no idea that millions and millions and millions of dollars was vanishing from his bank account, and he's just an innocent victim, and that might absolutely be true. I mean, there's a good possibility that is true. However, my experience over the years of dealing with these type of stories is there's much more much more going on, right? The smart money says this is more than meets the eye, and it's what I like to call the iceberg story, these type of of stories. The iceberg story, if you don't know what that is, and maybe you don't, uh, that's where we're getting about 10%. It's like an iceberg, right? You see an iceberg, it's big, yeah, 10% of it's above the water. Just ask the people that were on the Titanic. Uh, and the rest of it you can't see, right? The rest of it you can't see. You don't really know what's there. And that's about where we are. And you also have the positioning, which is going on. And everyone's trying to position themselves in the story. Now, page two here. What happens next in this Otani drama orama? So, from what I have unraveled here, and I admit I was a little obsessed with this story, it's kind of a big deal. I have a, somewhat of a rooting interest in the Dodgers. And so, Battle lines are being drawn here. You've got Shohei Otani's lawyers who are betting. You see what I did there? They're betting that a coordinated offensive attack is their best defense against the scandal onslaught. And it bears repeating. This came to light 
because the interpreter popped up on the radar of a bookmaker, the feds were investigating. The feds are involved. From what I understand, the feds are involved. So now we don't know what kind of dirt they have. I will tell you, not from firsthand experience, but from maybe some people I might know or maybe knew back in the day, typically the neighborhood bookkeeper does not take million dollars worth of bets from one person, right? So this is probably a little bit bigger than a neighborhood bookmaker uh, because normally the feds don't really give a crap about the neighborhood bookmaker in states where gambling is not legal. But if you go over a certain amount, that's a lot of taxable money, and that gets their attention. They need that money to pay those hack politicians. So typically the neighborhood bookmaker does not get involved in these kind of bets. But uh, even the person that would take these bets, you don't generally keep good records. What I mean by that, I know everything's done online these days, but put numbers instead of names, a digital paper trail, right? A digital paper trail. Now, Otani is already behind the eight ball in this story in one respect. This is a little tough for the Otani stands to get out of because what is always said about a scandal, the cover-up is worse than the crime. And his story, Otani's story, has already changed. Dramatically, by the way. Because from what I understand, on Tuesday, there was an interview that was arranged by Otani's people. And the interpreter did an interview with uh, ESPN, and he was he asked uh, Otani last year, he claimed he asked Otani last year to pay off his gambling debt, which multiple People said ballooned. The, the number that's going around is four and a half million. Can you imagine blowing four and a half? I mean, I listen. I'm a I'm not a great gambler myself here, but uh, there are points where I, uh, I step back a little bit. But uh, some people have a problem; they can't do it. But on Wednesday, so the day after, 24 hours or so, probably not even 24 hours later, that same interpreter said that Otani had no knowledge of his gambling debts, and that Otani had not transferred, had not wired him any money uh, to that bookmaker's associate. So, again, the cover-up worse than the crime. And my Spidey-like senses tell me that this is headed to a Chris Carter special. You got to have a fall guy. Now, is this interpreter willing to go on vacation to the Gray Bar Hotel? A nice, all-inclusive experience. Your meals are covered. You get a bed. Maybe breakfast. Not sure about that, but you have a nice workout place. We have many people listening in the Gray Bar Hotel. We have many people that got out of the Gray Bar Hotel and hope to never go back to the Gray Bar Hotel. But it's an interesting question. If this is something it is not now, if Otani is involved in this, can the interpreter take the rap? And how much would he have to get paid by Otani? to do a couple years in jail, or maybe not even that much. This is, who knows? He's not the bookmaker. He's the one putting the bets. He can claim he had a gambling problem. You're probably not going to get that much much time. All right, last word here. The other branch to this story is how will Major League Baseball handle this? How are they going to react? And this actually works out in Otani's favor. Let me tell you why. I have learned over the years behind these microphones that Major League Baseball is run by stumbling, bumbling morons. Uh, The investigative arm of Major League Baseball is the early Hollywood Keystone cops. And never forget, never forget, I don't care how much time goes by, never forget, these dum-dums investigated the Astros. There were teams calling up Major League Baseball saying, hey, these guys are cheating. All right, they're the cheating a-holes. So baseball opened an investigation. They opened and they, they searched around. They looked at everything. They said, you know what? There's no cheating going on here. Everything's kosher. It's all good. Stop with your little complaints. That Houston baseball team, they're not cheaters. Well, it took a whistleblower with giant cojones to expose the depths of despair in that cheating scumbag franchise, the A-holes, in the Lone Star State. So, again, it goes back to Otani. Otani is the face of baseball. He is the international man of mystery. He's the biggest thing ever. Every baseball hack writer told us that. Biggest thing ever. Biggest thing ever. 
Babe Ruth in the modern era. And so for the marketing arm of baseball, too big to fail. He is so deeply ingrained in baseball's business dealings that it would be a failure so disastrous for the economy of baseball. There's got to be some kind of cover. Now, again, the, 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 we don't know what the feds have and if Otani comes up in that or not. Right now, the Otani lawyers are speaking. There's more that will come out in this story. But if, in a parallel dimension, it goes that way, off to cuckoo land, then Major League Baseball can turn to the Jordan rules, follow the path of the late David Stern. Michael Jordan got dinged. He got dinged. There was funny business going on. He was involved with some shady cats. The NBA freaked out, but they couldn't really do much to Jordan. So Jordan, they, they played it off like Jordan had retired because of uh, the uh, situation involving his father. And then he ran off and played for the owner's minor league baseball team. Jerry Reinsdorf owned, owns the White Sox, and so he played for the Birmingham Barons, if you remember that. And uh, I should have a Birmingham Barons hat because it's got a B on it. That's a non sequitur. So anyway, get to the point. So the point of this is the Jordan rules. If Otani does end up being dragged through this, and any bet that he made is an illegal bet in California because – Gambling is still illegal. Because, and this is really the, the, the reason Otani's in trouble is because of the, the voters in California not approving sports gambling a couple years ago that was on the ballot. So it's really on the, the people of California, the idiots that did not pass that law legalizing sports wagering in the Golden State. But anyway, uh, if Otani ends up in the mud here, he could play in Santa Cruz. All right? the, the reverse Jordan. Michael Jordan played for the Birmingham Barons. What would be the equivalent? I don't even know if Otani knows what a basketball looks like, but he could play for the G League team in Santa Cruz. The Golden State Warriors, one of their owners, Peter Guber, I believe that's his name, say his name, uh, Gruber, something like that. Anyway, he, whatever his name is, he, not important. He's a rich guy. We don't know who he is, but he is one of the owners of the Golden State Warriors. So Otani could slide into Santa Cruz, hang out, beautiful place. I've been there many times, and play for the G League team. There you go. Problem solved. Do it for like a year and then come back and play for the Dodgers. Go to gambling, rehab, and, and all that. 